I want to introduce a good friend of mine, Will, who is truly one of the best in the business. Even at school, mid-teens, intrigued with helicopters, intrigued with the military, so signed up straight after school. Michael B. Jordan, you dropped us into Big C's then, do you remember that? Yeah, it was a rough old day. And then you had an incident that obviously changed your life. In a heartbeat though, you're in the water. Yeah, absolutely. Upside had, down. Yep, in the dark. I always think that great helicopter pilots have a history and it's what made them smart and it's what's made them often good. And that's why we use a lot of former military pilots and Will is one of those. You, who did you originally join when you joined the military? I was uh, Royal Navy in the Fleet Arrow. So I ended up frontline on the links, off mm. the back of freaks and destroyers. And did you want to do that from a young age? What, what brought you into the Navy? Yeah, I did. I have, even at school, mid-teens, intrigued with helicopters, intrigued with the military. So yeah, I signed up straight after school, went in. Will is always so sort of modest, but is incredibly competitive to become a Royal Navy pilot. How did you deal with all of that intense competition? Yeah, the, the standards were high. And then throughout training, you know, it's a shame you get really close to the guys, it takes a few years and, and slowly but surely people drop off mm. and fail as they go along. So we had a, a pretty high attrition rate. And then you went to fly on ships? It's run very differently to the Royal Air Force where it's about the aircraft. Mm. The aircraft is there to support as a team. Very similar with the, with the Army Air Corps as well. So we were the, the eyes of the ship and the fleet ahead. And talk to sort of some of the flying you had to do there, what it's like flying in winter, bad conditions, trying to land on a little ship. Every day is different, and the weather conditions, day, night, suddenly a fog bank comes in. You're also you're the met man on the ship, so it's very embarrassing when you've given the captain the brief the night before that weather's going to be good and you get woken up by the foghorn. That's usually promptly followed by pilot to the captain's cabin. Um, <laughs> mildly embarrassing. The role was, was exciting, challenging, and... Um, hairy at times. Yeah, and then you had a incident that obviously changed your life forever. Uh, yeah, we were going out on a, on a night submarine exercise. We'd, uh, we'd got onto the, into the aircraft. We'd had a couple of weeks of storms leading up to it, and we were still in this long, pr protracted storm. There was battery in the south coast, about 30 miles off the south coast of England. At night in, in bad weather in February, that's a cold place to be, 30 miles offshore. Uh, yeah, a very cold, dark place. So uh, we made sure we had a thermos flask with us. And the two of us, myself and my observer, we got out in the aircraft. and So we got the engine started, we were strapped to the deck. Unbeknownst to us, the engineers uh, had reported that the ship stabiliser had been tripping out that night, we didn't know about. And they needed to alter the course of the ship as well. So that combined together, the ship rolled so heavily we snapped our lashings and slid onto the side of the ship and rolled off the back. And what, and the ship just changed course, rolled, and you just, and it snapped the lashings? Yeah, so we, we felt the right hand wheel come off the deck and slam back down, and then the next roll was so much that the lashings gave way on the right side. As we rolled onto our side, the two of us jettisoned our doors, and there were quick release handles on the front of the Lynx doors, so we jettisoned, got rid of our doors, and before we knew it, we were upside down. We rolled onto our side, and then slid across the deck and rolled upside down into the water. In a heartbeat though, you're in the water. Yeah, absolutely. Upside had, down. Yep, in the dark. So in we had freezing water. So what? What? What's the first thing that goes through your brain? The force of the water coming into the aircraft was enough to rip my helmet off my head. What, um, rip the helmet off your yeah, head? Yeah, they found when they recovered the aircraft a week or so later, my helmet was in the in the back of the cab. And it had been fitted on and everything. It was on. The strap was was um, slightly worn and torn. So yeah, it was it was a it's a forceful impact of water that comes in and the cab's full virtually instantly. Your well. training kicked in faster to get that door, at least you got that door off. Yeah, absolutely. And the training, we, we do what's why is that? Why is the door so key? Just because if it gets distorted when it hits the water or you have an accident like that, if it gets distorted and stuck, then you're, you're stuck inside. So to give ourselves a clear access out before we hit the water was great. And when I swam out, I was stuck on something. So I had to swim back in, sit back down, disconnect that. And before I could disconnect that, I was slowly running out of breath. So again, on your life jacket, you carry a little oxygen bottle. Got that out purged that, started breathing underwater, and then disconnected my life raft and swam out wow. without that. God, I mean, that's presence of mind, though, to go for that and be able to... So it, it, was a, it was a busy minute or so under there. And you managed to free yourself, swim out, and then and your yeah. co-pilot, your... Yeah, Rob, my navigator, he was already out. He was in his, uh, in his dinghy. Really, the one thing that got to me there was the noise of the sea, the swell. You're out mm. there, you, you feel 
pretty vulnerable. By the time I got out, it was just the stabiliser of the right at the back of the aircraft that was sticking out of the water. The rest was fully submerged. So, and that soon disappeared. And then, so I managed to get hold of Rob by shouting and he shouted back. So after a few minutes of sort of swimming, doggy paddling, whatever, on the back, just trying to get to him, managed to grab hold of his life raft. And then the ship turned around. By that point, it looks like the ship's a million miles away, but it soon turned itself around. And sea boat was launched into the water and they came and got us. We were in the water for about half an hour. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and you must have been hypothermic by half an hour in, in winter water. Uh, we were, you know, again, the survival equipment you're, you're given is fantastic. So we're in full waterproof submersible suits and um, like a thick jumper but body suit underneath. So it was, we were pretty warm, but again, by the time we were out, we were mildly hypothermic. It's amazing, even with all that gear, yeah. You know, and everything working, you're still basically hypothermic pretty quick. You haven't, you haven't got long, but again, without it, you know, if you're yeah, a you're civilian in a white shirt and a just pair of trousers and you go in, then you've yeah. you've got a much more limited amount of time. So, all the kit worked; it was fantastic, and and it's uh, and it and it saved us why we're here today. And that ultimately led to you eventually leaving the navy. Yeah, I left fairly shortly after that. You know, the navy's loss was our gain, and we get to. You know, go around and do so many fun adventures with Will. Oh, I think I was thinking yeah. on the way up here, some of the ones we've had, like you know, we did maybe the Anthony Joshua one, the great boxer. That was, that was fabulous. Yeah, it was um, lifting him off the ground and, and yourself, and that was an underling onto Commando Ridge. Ridge. Yeah, in fantastic. The UK. Pretty cool. He's the heaviest human I've ever lifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once I could actually feel, feel him. Under that, there. Mate. Yeah, it was no, that was that um, was great, and it was a great location. Warwick Davis, obviously, probably the lightest obviously. one. You've yeah, had. Warwick. About... Oh, Michael B. Jordan, you dropped us into. We rappelled out into big seas. Then, do you remember that? Yeah, it was a rough old Off day. North. That was right, and he was really very nervous after that. We had a rough swim ashore. And um, yeah, I, th I thought out of all the stuff we've done, your piloting was incredible on that one especially. It was super windy, low visibility, hovering over the sea, spray everywhere, a lot on the line, a lot of pressure. And you were amazing on that. Thank you. Yeah, well no, done. It was, a, it was a great day, that. It was a challenging day. I know to watch you get, as you swam in, and you got properly goffered on the way out of the water, didn't you? Yeah, it's good, good fun. There you go, guys. The legend that is Will Banks, former Royal Navy uh, helicopter pilot, great friend to us, key part of our crew. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Come on. Awesome. <laughs>